is our next guest. The man, the myth, the legend, the SEC Network's own uh, anchor, host, on-course golf reporter. You name it, Peter Burns does it. And uh, in where, where, what airport are we in, Peter? Where are we at today? I, I am in a brief stop in, at home in Charlotte. Okay. my bags off the uh, baggage claim off to uh, – St. Simon's Island tomorrow for SEC Golf Championship. Oh, so tough. Never, never a dull moment. You're doing the Lord's work. Yeah, that's – I feel for you, man. That's – that's. I mean, you, you had to go play in a – you had to go play in the Zurich, uh, you know, doing the pro-am thing, and then you turn around and there's celebrity whatever, and then you turn around and you got to go cover more golf. I mean, it's a tough life you're leading, brother. I feel for you. Oh. Yeah, someone's got to do it. I mean, then it's somebody's doing it. And I, uh, you know, I I volunteered for tribute, but uh, it's fun, man. I mean, we just got back off of last week for SEC Women's Championship, and mm-hmm. that was a blast. And we got um, the NFL Draft coming up. We got the Men's Championship this weekend. We got baseball championships. I mean, it's um, this is I mean, everybody thinks that the SEC Network our busiest time of year, Patrick. It's, it's football season, right? But actually, it's, it's the spring. Yeah, we got you know. Baseball, basketball, softball, golf—I mean, all everything. Spring football games. So uh, this is actually my favorite time of year. Yeah, it's a it's a busy time of year. The only time you really get off is basically June, July, uh, and even sometimes not June because you're going to have multiple SEC teams that make it to Omaha, and so you got you know that that go- usually goes into June. So you really kind of only get July off when you think about it. But it, it's it's fun, right? I mean, this is. This is why you work for SEC Network, because you're in the premier conference and seemingly every sport that you cover has teams that have success in the SEC. I mean, listen, I, I got a little sign by my, my, my studio at my house that says 10,000. says if I, you know, if I didn't do this job, there would be 10,000 people that would want it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So I'm uh, extremely blessed. And, uh, yeah, I always joke around. I was like, man, it would be easier, though, if I worked for like one of the other conference networks who don't, don't – play so well right and so like you would have a lot more time off but uh nah man it's it's, it's the best and then now i'm trying to find out if lsu's got enough arms to make it to mm. omaha i know they got the, i know they got the bat sure to do it. it's just a matter of after schemes if they got somebody up there as well yeah we uh we've we've discussed that obviously at length the only thing you don't have though peter uh that the sec doesn't have is is women's bowling uh, Vanderbilt won the national championship in women's bowling, and they're a Southland Conference bowling league team. I know. I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna give it the credit. In fact, I, I played in the program yesterday with Will Gordon, who's a former Vanderbilt golfer, and he's playing on tour right now in um, at Zurich. And he was just like the first thing he said to me. He goes, "Hey, how about uh, the doors? Another natty." And I was like, "Well, it kind of counts, but um, right. It's not an imagine? SEC. It's not an SEC national championship." Yeah, can you imagine if we ended up having like SEC bowling? I figured like we would do good. Like I just want to have like 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 I can't. I wonder how expensive it is for all of them to start the sport, and would we like get the transfer portal working in bowling? Would we have like the best like Cajun bowlers? Like is Shreveport how, known? How for, how for hard? Well, number one, you have Kent Lowe at uh, at oh, LSU, who's coach. who's already yeah, who's already one of the best bowlers that I know. But I mean, how expensive can it be? It's a ball and a and a bad shirt and some shorts and and a you know and some shoes. Like, how hard can it be to outfit a bowling team? I, I that's a great question. In fact, now now I'm going to be forced to have the Vanderbilt uh, uh, women's bowling coach on my on my show this week. Yeah, and, and I'm actually. It's funny because. You know, I think some of the interviews that we do on our show, like, well, you know, we're lucky enough to get Brian Kelly. We're lucky enough to get the big-time coaches and stuff like that. But some of the more fascinating stuff are, like, you know, hearing from, like, the people who who work kind of the quote-unquote fringe sports because I don't know anything about them, and I'm fascinated. Like, Kentucky hunting – or Kentucky rifle team is one of the best rifle teams in in the world. And, like, I had their coach on one day was talking to us about, like, how they go on, like, recruiting trips to Scandinavia, you know, and finding, like, the best Norwegian rifle uh, person. It's incredible. Yeah, well, look, one of my favorite interviews I've ever done on this show was with the Texas Tech meat judging coach. Because yeah. Texas Tech has a – they're the Alabama of meat judging. And so, of course, that's right up my alley, as you would expect. And so I've I've had the, the Dr. Mark Miller, the – uh, Texas Tech meat judging coach on multiple times. Yeah. You know, I mean, oh, yeah. why wouldn't you? I mean, listen, smoked meat. 
smoke meets and bowling, just exactly how I thought this interview would Well, go. I mean, it's honestly, it, it's, it is par for the course, if you'll excuse the pun. Uh, uh, speaking, speaking of the Zurich, tell me about the experience down there. I know you got to, to hang out with Berman a little bit, which was pretty cool. You got to see our boy Tyler Moody from our, uh, our pick segment on Fridays. Uh, kind of give me an yeah. idea of what it, what it was like down in New Orleans. It was good, man, and and you know got to hang, hang with Berman, who of course is just as big of a legend as anybody in in, in sports, and he lit, you know he's just kind of the governor. You know everybody comes up and wants to shake his hand, and he's great. And then, um, you know it was it was great, man. I, I the weather was awesome down there in New Orleans, and and you know I kind of end up leaving. I don't get an opportunity to come back home to Louisiana a lot, mm-hmm. but then you realize just like how incredible the like the city of New Orleans is, and just the state. I mean, just the people were great. Um, the fans were awesome. Saw a lot of purple and gold up there. You know, saw a lot of purple uh, for Northwestern as well, too. And it was, I don't know, it was just a, a cool deal. And, you know, I, on my way out, all of a sudden, I hear somebody, you know, kind of saying, hey, my name. And I'm like, oh, I wonder who it is. And I turn around, Sam Burns. And I'm like, yeah. that's awesome. I was like, I'd love to say that I was related to Sam. Um, but I, I think he'd call me out and say, no, we're not related. But um, it was it's cool to see his success going from, you know, playing at LSU to sure enough being a hell bona fide star. Yeah, well, that's a that's Shreveport native Sam Burns to you, sir. Uh, Calvary Calvary Baptist Academy, who uh, of course their ex football coach is Doug Peterson, uh, yeah. who is now with the the Jags. So, uh, look, in the end, it all comes back to Shreveport, Peter. So, I think you know that. Three, I think three, you're, you're three, aware. One eight, three, one, great. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter Burns from the SEC Network joining us as he uh, qu- quick stop over at the house before he continues on to do a little SEC golf. Uh, give me an idea of of because uh, you do some you do on course reporting, right? You're you're out there. You're right. the, the the old David Faraday. Uh, running around out there tell me what that's like that's honestly been always been a dream of mine is to do golf uh in some regard and i'd love to be an on-course reporter i'd probably die after walking one round at this point i'd need you know i'd need like six months to get in shape but uh what's that like being out on the course and being being able to walk and uh and commentate well it's great the the one thing that you have to realize is that you know having played golf a little bit i know enough to kind of be damaged you know or enough to be dangerous damage and actually yeah be dangerous to know what i'm doing the problem is is that you have to make sure like i've made the mistake before of not kind of covering my mouth and not having like a clipboard mm-hmm. because you don't you don't realize how loud you are when you have your headphones on so yep. i'll never forget the first year i did it. it's like yeah he's got 168 i don't see any chance he can get this close you know <laughs> and like the golf voice yeah. And the guy backs off of it, and he's like, bro, I can hear you. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So I've uh, I've learned my lessons from there. But, man, it's like, you know, we'll see Sam Bennett, who played great at the Masters. Mm-hmm. We'll see, um, you know, Gordon uh, Sargent, who was there at the Masters. I mean, it truly is. I go through and, you know, look at the rosters, and I'm like, covering SEC men's golf is like covering a future PGA Tour event because there's at least going to be – you know, probably five or six guys are going to have some success. Yeah, I mean, Sam Burns is a perfect example of that. You know, yeah. goes from goes from Shreveport to LSU to to being on the tour. Uh, the real question, though, is 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 the course you're going to cover the SEC championship tougher than Augusta National? Uh, as we we saw, Sam Bennett seemed to in, indicate that some of the courses he plays during the during his regular <laughs> tournament time are tougher than Augusta National were. Yeah, I mean that's. And that's what it is, too. And, I mean, that, that's no different than, like, when you talk to SEC football players, you say, well, you know what? Like, what's kind of crazy is that, like, I heard louder crowds in, you know, in SEC stadiums. Mm-hmm. I and mean, that's just kind of the reason why. And even baseball, you know, like, so a bunch of baseball players will say, you know, hey, my, um, you know, the pitching I faced was harder in SEC baseball than it was in single A and double A, and the crowds were bigger. So, I mean, uh they say it just means more. I know that sometimes sometimes looked at as a joke, but it uh, it actually makes sense though. Yeah, it actually makes a ton of sense. All right, you mentioned baseball and and whether or not LSU would have enough arms. Obviously, Skeens is you could argue he's the best pitcher in college baseball this year. Uh, but then after that, it's it's a bit of a crapshoot for LSU. We know the lineup is incredibly dangerous. What do you see? Hey, hey don't get hit on your way out. Don't don't. <laughs> don't don't die on the air. Man, right? I got like three bags, and I'm doing an interview. Like people are like, it's it's fascinating. So, uh, and people are people hey, are right 
people are probably shooting you dirty looks. They're like, oh, look at this guy. He's so important. He's got to be on the phone while he's walking through the airport. Like, <laughs> look at this guy. Just look. Tell everyone in the Charlotte airport that you're on the Patrick Netherton show. They'll they'll calm down. We're we're big hey, in Charlotte. Patrick Netherton show here in Streetport. It's a big show. He's kind of a big deal. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I, I got the. Uh, I still got the bad look, so I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. that's actually probably the look for me rather than, no, than no, for you right. at that the point. Patrick Netherton. Yes. Still, oh, okay, yeah, I got the way through. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. So it, it, it's basically a pass to do just about anything you want. Oh, man. Yeah, in fact, I'm just going to steal a couple of bottled waters here while somebody's looking and just blame it on you. Yeah, hey, great. tell them to tell them to charge the show. I mean, you know, we don't have any advertisers, or so just two, but, uh, you know, we can afford it. We can afford a couple of bottled right, waters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but tell, they're $19 a piece. Yeah, the of course they are. Of course they are. And that was before inflation. Um, all right, give me some idea of what of what you think about LSU right now and kind of what they're going through. Obviously, the arms being injured is a big deal, but they do have the ability to outslug you if you uh, if necessary. Yeah, I mean, and, and here's the deal. Like, as long as they've got the bat, I mean, they don't just have eight or nine bats. they got 13. I mean, you got two or three guys that can't even get into the lineup every day that – you know, they're going to be called upon at some time. And, you know, every time I worry about a team, I go back and look at what happened with Ole Miss last year, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, we were basically writing off Mike Bianco as like, hey, this is last year, and I don't even know if they're going to get in the tournament. They won the whole damn thing. So, like, I'm, I'm a little worried. I mean, when you lose a midweek game, I remember back in Benary's day, like, I remember him telling me, hey, sometimes it's good to win a, a lose a midweek game because you're, you, you kind of just wakens everybody up. And I think that's what's happened. Number one team in the country all season long. And, you know, maybe they get, you know, roughed up in a midweek game. And all of a sudden it's kind of like, all right, a little, you know, come to Jesus moment for them. Well, and, and honestly, and Maneri was big on this. Bertman, Skip, was, was pretty big on this as well. That's when you tinker a little bit, too. Um, you yeah. know, that's when you're throwing arms. You know, Skeens is not going out there on a Tuesday. So, you know, you're throwing guys. I mean, they, they had Javon Coleman who came in and threw an inning coming off of, of Tommy John. Uh, you know, he throws an inning, and that's good to see. It's, he's actually back before everyone projected he would be. So, you know, he maybe builds up and becomes a, a big piece of your, you know, the back end of the season for you. But the idea that, hey, maybe you find a guy. A guy gives you two or three solid innings that hasn't pitched a lot this year. He does that midweek. That's a guy that maybe can go get you two outs in in uh, late May, right? That's That's what all these midweek games are for, but – Conversely, being the number one team in the country, you don't want to go out there and lose midweek games, right? Because there's every chance if they go and drop two or three to Ole Miss, suddenly they've lost four of their last five, and you know maybe they're not the number one team in the, anymore. Yeah, and then I mean, ultimately, what it comes down to it are, are they go, are they going to play at the box come come regionals and super regionals, right? right. And, I mean, they've done they've done enough to do do that. So you know, it's kind of in J I trust. Um, until he proves me wrong, and now that he's finally got kind of the team that he wants to have, minus you know some of the arms being injured, you just kind of let it play out. But I mean, you look at what Arkansas did to Tennessee recently. I yeah. mean, Vanderbilt's not going out of any uh, uh, out of their way. The Florida South Carolina series this weekend is going to be great. I mean, that you know Jack uh, Caglione has become a must-watch both ways player. Absolutely, and South Carolina. Is, you know, they're what. ERA is like two runs better this year, and then they're just hitting bombs left and right. So, I mean, it, it is what we say every single year, Patrick. It's like the SEC baseball is basically double-A baseball. And you see the scouts come out, and that's why the, the attendance has been unbelievable, and, and, and that's why it just reigns supreme here in this conference. Yeah, absolutely does. By the way, where can we, uh, where can we catch your coverage uh, of golf coming up? So we'll be um, so SEC Network. We will air the semifinals okay. on the on ESPN Plus and the SEC Network app uh, over on Saturday, and then Sunday morning we have the full blown like full SEC Network takeover. So we'll be on the actual network, uh, and we'll air the final championship match. So it's kind of like a Ryder Cup type deal where they've got five players for, of the last two teams and. You know, first person at three points wins the uh, the SEC championship game. So, and we'll go from there back to in studio for baseball until we get into softball tournament up in Fayetteville this year, and then baseball in Hoover. Yeah, it's uh, it's the traveling traveling road show. 
Uh, the guys that, that lock it down, Dari Noka, one of our good friends, obviously, Peter Burns, uh, handling business as well. Uh, by the way, next time, I know you're, you're, it's not basketball season anymore, but next time you get the shooter in the studio, please tell him I said hi. He's one of my favorite people <laughs> in the world. God bless Pat Bradley. Um, every time I think that I, I'm way too excited and way too fired up to be on air, I host the show with, with Pat Bradley mm-hmm. and I go, no, 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 there's still a couple more levels I can get. To. Yeah. You're, you're not at the top. Uh, <laughs> no, you're no. definitely not at the top. That guy is. And I just love the fact that even though, uh, you know, he went to Arkansas and he's been down here forever, the accent's still there. Uh, it's, it's still there. Oh. The, you can't take the Boston out of him. I, and I love that to death. Uh, that's why he's one of my favorite people. He's just such a beautiful human being. So please give him the our best. best. Man. I will. I will. We'll, uh, we'll have to hook up soon, man. Let's try to uh, connect either in Hooper or uh, over in Omaha. We'll uh, we'll figure it out, my friend. Uh, safe travels. Enjoy the golf. And, uh, you know, obviously we'll catch up here before too long. <laughs> Later, Patrick. See All right. Peter Burns.